Okay. Today in this lecture, I shall discuss about the multi-level inverters. Multi-level inverters are gaining huge attention for medium voltage and high power applications. There are many topologies available for the multi-level inverters, but still many other topologies are under research because day by day the application, the industry applications are changing and based on those applications, what best topology we can have for a multi-level inverter that is still under research and in this lecture, I shall keep my discussion on the very common, well, well adopted three multi-level inverter topologies. Let us first see before entering into those topologies, let us first see what is the meaning of multi-level. In a conventional power electronic inverter, that is a bridge inverter, this output is shown for a bridge inverter, single phase bridge inverter. In, in that bridge inverter, the output has two levels. One is Vs, another is minus Vs. There is no third level available because there is a battery which is connected at the input side and by switching action of the thyristor pairs, like for T1 and T2, we get the output as Vs and by switching T3 and T4, we get the output as minus Vs. So there are only two levels which are available. However, in a multi-level inverter, there are much more levels. By increasing the number of levels at the output, we try to make the waveform more near to the sinusoidal waveform. Like here, these three waveforms, they show the different levels of output. Like the first waveform is a three level out waveform. In this three level, the first level is Vm by 2. Second is 0 and the third level is minus Vm by 2. So this is a three level waveform. Like this is another waveform which is five level. The first level is Vm by 2, another level is Vm by 4, third level is 0, fourth is minus Vm by 4 and fifth is minus Vm by 2. Similar way, if you further increase the number of levels like uh, 3, 5 and then this becomes the seven level. In seven level, the first level is Vm by 2, then 2 Vm by 6, then Vm by 6, then 0, then so on. So these are the seven levels which are great. And if you compare these three waveforms, in fact, if you compare these four waveforms, you will find that as you are increasing the number of waveform, the number of levels, the waveform is becoming more and more sinusoidal. Comparing these two voltages, what we can infer is the total harmonic distortion in case of a seven level output will be less. However, the TSD will be more in this case. So by increasing the number of levels, we are reducing the harmonic content in the waveform. This is the major benefit of using a multiple multi-level inverter. Now in a multi-level inverter, we are trying to create a smoother stepped output waveform. What is the stepped waveform output? Stepped waveform is achieved by increasing the number of levels. You further increase the levels, more steps will be available, the more waveform will become equal to the sinusoidal waveform. This is how we create the different levels. This is a basic, this is not a multi-level inverter. This is, this figure gives you a basic understand, understanding about how to create a level. Like this figure, there is a battery. This battery is connected with the switch. If the switch if we place this switch at point number one, then a voltage of VDC will be available at the output. Between these two terminals, the output will be equal to VDC if the switch is placed here. Now, if we push this switch towards this point, then the output will become zero. So at the output side, we will get two voltages, one VDC and another zero. So that is why we say this as a two level. Now similarly, if we create, if we wish to create three levels of voltage at the output side, then what we can do is we can connect these two sources in series and we can connect switch in such a way that if switch is placed at this point, the output voltage becomes a series combination of these two. Like the voltage between this point and this point will be an addition of VDC and VDC. So if the switch, if the switch is here, that means 
the output voltage is equal to 2 VDC. If I place this switch as here, then the output voltage will be VDC. And if we place the switch here, then the output voltage will be zero. So by changing these three positions, we can have three levels of voltages at the output, zero, VDC and two VDC. Now, if we further connect more batteries in series, we can have more levels of voltage at the output side. Now here, N levels are shown. If the switch is placed here, you will get an output of N VDC. If the switch is here, the output will be N minus one VDC. For this output will be N minus two VDC and so on. So you can have a voltage from zero up to N levels. Now in these three figures, whatever voltage V0 you are getting at the output, that is the, at the positive side. If the similar structure is prepared towards the next negative side as well, then we can have the levels at for the negative voltage as well. So by using this concept, we develop a multi-level inverter. I'll show you how exactly we do it. But before that, let me tell you some of its advantages. Multi-level multi inverters, they have high voltage operation capability. That means they, they can give you different voltage levels. You can increase the voltage at the output by small voltages at the input side. It, it, it gives you extremely low distortion. Low distortion means as you increase the number of steps, the waveform is becoming more and more sinusoidal. And as the waveform is becoming more sinusoidal, the harmonic content is reduced and the distortion is also therefore reduced. It has lower dV by dt. Now, what is this dV by dt? We need to understand why we are telling that in this multi-level inverter, dV by dt is low. If you look at this waveform, the change in voltage which is happening at this particular point is from Vs to minus Vs. Means the voltage is changed by 2 Vs. The difference between this point and this point is 2 Vs. So for a short duration of time, the voltage is changed from Vs to minus Vs or you can say by 2 Vs it has changed. But if you look at this waveform, the, volt, the change in voltage is from 0 to Vm by 2. Here it is further reduced. The change in voltage is just from Vm by 2 to Vm by 4. That means voltage is just changed by 0.25 Vm. Where, whereas here the voltage is changed to 2 Vs. Now here this step is further reduced. So by increasing the number of levels, this change in voltage at every step is reduced, this brings the advantage of having lower dV by dt in this case. These inverters can operate with a lower switching frequency. Yes, this is an advantage if we are considering the fundamental frequency at the output. Now what is fundamental frequency? The frequency like here in this case, the frequency which this sine wave or this waveform is uh, having this frequency is called the fundamental frequency. So whatever output frequency we are getting for a particular waveform, that output frequency is the fundamental frequency. But if we consider the PWM switching, then this is no more an advantage. This is only an advantage if you are only working the multi-level inverter for getting the fundamental frequency at the output. This multi-level inverter, it because it is giving you the lower uh, switching frequency, so it also gives you the lower switching losses. If the, if the switching is reduced, that means the switching losses are also reduced. And if switching losses are reduced, uh, are, uh, if switching losses um, are reduced, the efficiency is improved. So these are a few of the benefits of using multi-level inverters. Multi-level inverter, as I earlier said, it, these are used for the medium voltage and high power applications. A uh, typical for a typical drive, let me tell you what should be the values. The voltage, like if the voltage is around say 6.6 .6 kV, the power could be as high as 4 megawatts. So this is a typical. This is this is the typical output of uh, a drive. So for 4 megawatts, 
6.6 kV. For for say one or two megawatts, it is just 3.3 kV. So wherever we have such applications, we go for the multi-level inverters. The typical uh, applications include UPS, high voltage DC transmission, variable frequency drives. In pumps and conveyors, it is used. It is very much used in renewable energy applications nowadays. In renewable, particularly, it is used for the solar applications. Like wherever we have the solar panels connected, every panel is giving you a small voltage. Now, all those voltages can be added and they can be summed up through multi level inverter, and the overall voltage could be raised. These are also like uh, another application can be fuel cell. In fuel cell also there are different cells which are having low voltage but then when all those voltages are combined it brings you the higher voltage level at the output. So these are very much used in renewable energy applications. There is only a uh, single I should say ki there is a single disadvantage of MLI and that advantage is it is complex. It's switching control circuit is not easy to structure so it its design is complex and here i have written that we need isolated power supplies but this disadvantage can be turned up as an advantage like in case of solar or in fuel cells so this is uh, no more uh, a big disadvantage but yes there are some topologies which wish to have the isolated power supplies at the input side. These are the three topologies available. The first topology is diode clamped or the neutral clamped inverter. Second is capacitor clamped. It is also called the flying capacitor. And third category is cascaded edge bridge inverter. Now cascaded edge bridge inverter can be symmetrical. It could be asymmetrical. In fact, capacitor clamped or flying capacitor can also be symmetrical or asymmetrical. So this chart, this shows you the classification where we have the common DC source, we have the diode clamped and the capacitor clamped and where we have the separate DC sources, we have the cascaded edge bridge inverter. In cascaded edge bridge inverter, I shall discuss about the symmetrical and asymmetrical both. Let's go through the first category, first topology. In first topology, we we can have like for different levels we have different topology like in diode clamp this is the structure for three level for five levels it would be a different combination for seven levels it would be a different circuit but for the basic understanding i have taken this three level circuit there is a battery at the input side now to break this voltage into two parts what we do we connect two capacitors here this capacitor holds a voltage of VDC by 2 and this capacitor holds a voltage of VDC by 2. So basically whatever is the voltage it is divided here and then these two diodes, these diodes are called the clamping diodes. The purpose of using these two diodes is to handle the reverse voltage. So whatever reverse voltage appears here that is handled by the diodes. So whatever, whatever is the voltage here if it is reversed these are handled by the diodes and that is why it is called the diode clamped inverter. Now here these four are the switches SA1, SA2, SA1 dash and SA2 dash. Now by suitable switching of these four switches we can have three levels at the output. One level is we can have zero, another level is VDC by two and third level is minus VDC by two. That means by using this type of structure, this type of topology, we can have this waveform at the output. Now how we get exactly this waveform at the output, These, this uh, matrix, it shows the switching pattern or the switching, uh, switching of the various switches, how we should switch it. Now in first case, if you wish to have this terminal a as negative then what you could do is we can we can keep these two switches as open zero means the switch is open one means the switch is closed 
Now SA1, SA2, if these two are open, and if SA1 dash and SA2 both are closed, then what will happen? Whatever is the load connected between A and zero, that load will be connected between this circuit. Let me draw this circuit. It would be connected between this circuit. Now this is the circuit. Now in this circuit, in this circuit, the negative voltage of this capacitor it will appear at terminal A, and the upper plate will be connected to this terminal. So the voltage appearing here will be minus V DC. Now in the another pattern, in the next, if we do turn on these two switches, and if we keep these two switches as open, then what will happen? This capacitor it will get connected to the load. So whatever is the voltage here, it will be available at the load side. Now SA1, SA2, if these two are closed, the output will be something like this capacitor voltage VDC by 2, it will be connected to A. So here a positive voltage will be appearing and its negative will be connected to 0. So at the output, we shall have a voltage of VDC by 2. Now if you wish to have a 0 voltage here, but 0 voltage is okay, but we also wish to have the um, the current flowing through the load. So what we do in this case is SA2 and SA1 dash, the inner switches, these two switches are closed. When these two switches are closed, this forms the closed circuit and the output voltage becomes zero. So there are three switching patterns available for a three level inverter. Now for five in five levels, what we can do is a similar leg is introduced here as well and these connections this neutral point is taken in between from uh, in between these two capacitors this is the neutral point which is taken it is connected like this a is taken from here and b is taken from here so whatever is the load it would be connected between point a and between point b now if we keep the switching pattern like this we can have the five levels at the output where the first level will be vdc Second level will be VDC by 2. Third level would be 0. Fourth level will be minus VDC by 2. And fifth level will be minus VDC. So by switching of these 8 devices, we can have these 5 levels. So this is the switching pattern that I have shown. You can go through it. As an example, let's take the first pattern. SA1 and SA2 are open. These two are open. While these two are closed. And from this leg, these two are open and these two are closed. So basically from the positive side, what you have done is you have closed these two switches and from the negative side, you have closed these two switches. So by because these two are closed, the negative polarity will be gained by A. This negative polarity will be gained through this terminal. So VA with respect to this point zero, the voltage VA naught, it will be minus VDC by two. And if you look at this here, the positive terminal is connected to the, the positive is connected to B. This, when these two switches are open, the positive polarity is taken by B. So with respect to zero, it is giving you a voltage of VDC by two. So if this voltage is minus VDC by two, if this is VDC by two, if you combine these two, it becomes voltage VAB, the voltage VAB becomes minus VDC. Now, similarly by this switching pattern, you can have VDC and similar way we can have the five levels at the output. Now by following this, what kind of waveform we can have at the output? This waveform. This is a five step waveform where the first step will be VDC, VDC, then VDC by two, then zero, then minus VDC by two and last is again VDC. So these five steps we can have through this. Now, what are the advantages of a diode clamped multi-level inverter? A large number of N yields small harmonic distortion. As I said, as the number of level increases, the waveform becomes more and more sinusoidal. It has low dB by dt. If the number of levels are increased, the change in voltage from one level to another level will be small. This will give you a low dB by dt. All of the phases share a common DC bus. Like here, it is shown for a single phase. In a single phase, this becomes the positive bus. This becomes the negative bus. 
now for a three phase we can have this structure now this gives you the three phase output in three phase also you can see there is one positive and one bus negative so for all the phases we have the common dc bus so the benefit of having a common dc bus is the source can be single now third is no dynamic voltage sharing in dynamic voltage sharing problem that we discussed in the first unit of our electronics where we discussed about the various uh, thyristors connected in series we learned that whenever the thyristors are connected in series the voltage sharing takes place now here in multi level inverters we don't use thyristors here we use ig igbts so these igbts they need to withstand the the voltage and the voltage is distributed among the various igbts various switches now this problem is not much significant here because each switch has to handle just half of the voltage of its capacity if a switch has a capacity of 1 it will handle a voltage of 0.5 so this becomes an advantage in this case the reactive power flow can be controlled and as i earlier said this provides you the high efficiency for fundamental switching frequency however for pwm this is not an advantage but yes for fundamental switching frequency you can have high frequency uh, high efficiency because the switching losses are minimized now what are the disadvantages the major disadvantage first is it has higher number of devices it uses many switches capacitors diodes as you increase the output levels more levels will have to have more devices connected so this makes the system costly and on the other side it also makes the system complex now different diodes which are connected in in the in the higher levels the ratings of every diode will be different and the diodes has to withstand high voltages because these are the uh, uh, diodes which are used to uh, block the reverse voltages that is why it is called diode clamp so more voltage has to be handled by the diodes and more devices are used now second second disadvantage is uneven loss distribution in the power devices now what is this uneven loss distribution in this if you look at this three level you will find that there are four switches when you need a level of minus vdc you operate these two switches for a level vdc by 2 these two switches are operated but for zero level the inner two switches are operated that means the operation of all the switches is not uniform the outer switches sa1 and sa2 dash these two switches are only used when these two levels are to be uh, taken at the output however the zero level comes very frequent like here if you look at this waveform first it is zero then high then again it is zero then negative high then again it is zero so for every zero level you are operating the inner switches so the operation of the inner switches is more or you can say inner switches are operated more compared to the outer switches so obviously inner switches will produce more loss and the outer switches will produce less loss so the loss in every switch is not uniform and the life is also affected if one switch is if one switch is used for less time the other switches are used for uh, for more uh, switching actions then uh, definitely it will affect its uh, efficiency increase its loss and life will also be affected third is real power flow is difficult because of the capacitor imbalance what happens because of the continuous charging and discharging of the capacitor the dc midpoint voltage doesn't remains exactly zero it rather it 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 many times it fluctuates this makes the real power flow difficult and fourth disadvantage is its pwm switching pattern is 
complicated in uh, my discussion i shall not be going through it but yes uh, its pwm switching pattern is bit complicated next category is capacitor clamped this is also called the flying capacitor why it is called flying capacitor because for different switching actions the similar capacitor comes with a different uh, the uh, similar capacitor will have the different polarity at the different stages you will understand its meaning when when we'll go through this flying capacitor or the capacitor clamp here in place of the diodes we are using the capacitors so the diode clamped topology is replaced by clamping capacitors now redundancy in the switching states is available let us discuss what is this redundancy this would be more clear if we first look at the switching pattern of this this structure is more or less similar to the diode clamp the only difference is in place of those two diodes there is one capacitor which is ca1 it is connected now these two capacitors ca1 and ca2 they are used to divide this voltage in two now by operating sa1 and sa2 if these two are on and lower two switches are off the output will be positive this last one so if these two are on the output voltage va0 will be plus vdc by 2 if these lower switches are on and these two switches are open then the output will be minus vdc by 2 now how do we get zero for getting a zero we can we can have this combination as on sa1 and sa2 dash sa1 and sa2 dash if we keep these two as as one the output will be zero similarly by keeping these two sa2 and sa1 dash as on and rest two as open we can have the zero output now this these two states these allows the redundancy now what is this redundancy redundancy is like here if you look at zero if i take zero by switching action of these two then these two will remain open now if i take this zero by switching of these two these two will remain open so alternatively by using the alternate pattern this and this alternatively i can create the uniform switching of all the devices so all the devices can be switched on uniformly by using this redundancy because here zero could be achieved by these two so one state at one time one state becomes redundant and if one state becomes redundant then by alternatively following these two states for first time zero we will operate these two for another time zero we will operate these two by alternatively switching between these two patterns we can utilize the switches uniformly and hence the problem of the non uniform loss distribution can be can be sorted out here in this case so this brings the advantage this redundancy brings the advantage for five levels what we can do is similar this structure is added here and by this switching sequence this switching pattern we can have the five levels at the output the five levels that we are having at the output is vdc then vdc by 2 then 0 then minus vdc by 2 and minus vdc so one level is uh vdc vdc by 2 and uh, i think i made some mistake uh, another one level is minus vdc so by by these switching actions like here if we consider the first case in first case if a1 and a2 both are open while these two are closed so a becomes negative a becomes negative vdc by 2 by keeping these two as closed and these two as open we can have b as positive so we will have vb not is equal to vb not equals to vdc by 2 now what is vab vab is va minus vb so va 
minus VB, it will give you minus VDC. So please correct it. This is a negative volt. This is a negative voltage here. This this voltage is negative. So please correct it. So the five levels are VDC, VDC by two, zero minus VDC by two, and minus VDC. So by by other um, these patterns, you can have this. And if you compare it with the previous one, previous means diode clamp. In diode clamp, let us let us count the the switching states. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Now, by by these six combinations, you can have these five levels. Whereas in capacitor clamped, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten switching states. So that means compared to six, here we have ten switching states. So we have the redundancy available here as well. So that is why it is written as an advantage that. This capacitor clamp give you phase redundancy, and this may be useful in balancing the switching of the devices. Now TSD will be less. Another advantage will be TSD will be less for the higher N higher levels. Large N allows the capacitors extra energy during long tran uh, discharge transient. It can also Control the active and reactive power flows because it can have control over both active and reactive power flow. This topology is well suited for the VAR generation. So this brings a good application of multi-level inverters in static VAR generation. Now, what are its disadvantages? This topology is uses capacitors. There are more capacitors, and capacitors compared to the diodes are more bulky and expensive. So this becomes a costly affair. Second is its its control is complex. Why its control is complex? Because, like here, when you are switching for for zero state, when you are switching SA two and this, the capacitor will have a different polarity. And if you are if you are switching these two, the Capacitor polarity will be different, so these capacitors are charging and discharging, and based on the charging and discharging of the capacitors, accordingly we we design the control. So its design is much more complex compared to the first topology because here by proper utilizing the redundancies, the complex the control becomes little complex. Third is switching utilization and efficiency are. Poor switching utilization obviously will be poor because we are making use of the redundancy. So obviously some states will be idle. So this uh, brings the switching utilization and the efficiency of this for real power transmission is little low compared to the previous previous one. Third category, third topology is cascaded H bridge inverter. In cascaded H bridge inverter, there are different voltages. There are different voltages sources at the input side. Like here, in previous two topologies, in diode clamped and the capacitor clamped, we had a single DC source at the input. But here we have the different levels of um, discrete levels of the voltage at the input. Um, we have different voltage sources at the Input side and these different voltage sources at the input side brings discrete levels at the output. So the output of each H bridge can have three discrete levels. Results in a staircase. I'll I'll show you in my next slide what is a single H bridge and then how do we combine H bridges to make a cascaded H bridge inverter. These inverters are very much used in medium voltage high power inverters, particularly in renewable. It is gaining a huge attention. Now this is a single edge bridge. A single edge bridge will always be three level. Now what? How do we get these three levels? The input is VDC. If we switch on S1 and S2, we will get the voltage VDC at the output. If we switch S3 and S4, 
you will have a negative voltage minus VDC at the output. Now, how to get the zero? If we switch on S4 and S2, the output will be zero. Alternatively, if we switch S1 and S3, then also the output voltage will be zero. Now, if the output voltage is zero, the current will have its passage through these two devices. Now, here through these devices. So, by, by these two, we can have zero output and by using these two also we can have zero output. Now please note these switches do contain the diodes and anti-panel. Like here if we have in place of S3 if I connect an IGBT then that IGBT will contain a, an anti-panel diode with it. So to provide the path sometimes the IGBT the path is taken through IGBT and and uh, depending upon the direction of current, sometimes diodes comes into play. So I'm not going into those details, but yes, the um, the current shall get a path when the output voltage is zero. The current shall get a path between these two if the voltage is zero, and it can also get the path through these two if the voltage is zero. So again, we have the redundancy available here as well. Now to create more levels, we can have d 2 H bridge inverters connected in cascade. Now if we connect these two in cascade, we can have these five levels plus 2 VDC, plus VDC, 0, minus VDC and minus 2 VDC. Now how do we get these five levels? Let us say the output of this is VDC, the output is of this is also VDC. If both VDC are added, then the output will be 2 VDC. If the output of one bridge is VDC and the other bridge is zero, the total output will be VDC. If the if the two bridges are controlled such that the output of both is zero, the overall output will be zero. If one bridge is giving you minus VDC, another is giving you zero, the overall output will be minus VDC. If both bridges are operated for minus VDC at the output, the total voltage will be minus two VDC. So by proper switching action of these two we can have these five levels available now what should be the switching pattern this is the switching pattern which is given here by suitable switching selection we can have five levels which five levels minus two vdc minus vdc zero vdc and two vdc so these are the five levels which can be attained at the output now here we have considered the two sources as equal. If the voltages of these two sources are equal, then this becomes a symmetrical H bridge inverter. So in symmetrical H bridge inverter, what we have, we have the sources of the similar value. If the sources are of dissimilar values, like if this is 100 and this is 200, then we can have seven levels at the output. We can ha even have nine levels at the output. Now by using the same cascade, we can have five levels if the voltages are same. We can have seven levels if the voltages are in ratio one is to two. Please note these two voltages, it could be similar in case of symmetrical. It could be dissimilar in case of asymmetrical but if these two voltages are not similar then these two voltages should have a ratio of either 1 is to 2 or 1 is to 3. If the ratio is 1 is to 2 then what will happen if this voltage is 1 and this voltage is 2 the total addition can give you 3 at the output. By operating 2 we can have 2 at the output by operating 1 we can have 1 at the output by Switching operation for zero, we can have zero at the output. So similar way, we can have minus one, minus two, minus three at the output. So for seven, for seven levels, we use one to two ratio in case of a symmetrical H bridge. By having this ratio of one is to two, we can have seven levels. Those seven levels will have one volt, two volt, three volts, zero, minus 1, minus 2 and minus 3. If the ratio is 1 is to 3, then one voltage could be 1 plus 3. Another could be 3 minus 1. Third could be 3. Fourth could be 
1. So we can have a level as 1, 3, 3 minus 1, 3 plus 1. So these four levels we can have for the positive. For, neg uh, for negative similar way we can have these four. Minus 1, minus 3, minus 2 and minus 4. And ninth level would be 0. So these are the 9 levels that we can have by using a ratio of 1 is to 3. Now this H bridge it could be used for, for obtaining these levels. Now suppose in symmetrical let me go back to the symmetrical case how many maximum levels we can have through symmetrical 5. Now suppose through symmetrical if we have the different fuel cells and all those fuel cells have the similar voltage then all those all those voltages can be added but for getting the five levels for a symmetrical case for getting the five levels or the output we will use two bridges if you wish to increase the number of level at the output by symmetrical topology then in that case an addition of one extra will raise the level by two like here in case of two bridges we add the level of five by three bridges we will have the level of seven by four bridges we will have the level of nine this is the formula which gives you levels at the output in this formula n is the number of levels at the output s is the source how many sources are used here three so in case of three sources we can have 3 into 2 as 6 and plus 1. So we will have 7 possible levels for this particular case. These levels are as shown. VDC, 2 VDC, 3 VDC. 0, minus VDC, minus 2 VDC and 3 VDC. So these are the 7 levels. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. These are the 7 levels that we can attain from here. Now if I add one more bridge. If I add one more bridge. Then what will happen? the total s will become 4 and the levels will become 9 so in symmetrical by by adding more bridges we raise the number of levels now what are the advantages of cascaded edge bridge the series structure allows a scalable model um, uh, modularized circuit layout and packaging due to the identical structure for each edge bridge now what is this modular structure modular structure you can see all these bridges are same if this one bridge can be made as one one uh, modular structure then we can have these similar kind of edge bridges and in cascade and by adding the similar edge bridges we can raise the levels so modular construction it can have the modular construction modular construction means every bridge bridge is of same shape so uh, so by taking just one module we can have one bridge then another mo module uh, for um, second similarly for all so this because of the identical structure of edge bridge we can have the modularized circuit and this allows a scalable uh, like scalability is like you can you can use it for uh, for various applications now no extra clamping diodes or voltage balancing capacitors are necessary here you need not to have any diode or because it only uses the four switches and these are the feedback diodes these will anyways be used even if it is diode clamped or capacitor clamped these diodes will be there but extra clamping diodes or clamping capacitors will not be used here switching redundancy is available here so this is also another advantage there is only one disadvantage that is it requires isolated power sources and whenever we are using isolated power sources we need to have the large isolating transformer as well so this increases this adds to the cost so this is about the three uh, topologies of the multi-level inverters. I think this is enough for today. Thank you.